and welcome everybody to Geek Domo. Okay, today we are going to continue my love-hate relationship with a game I like to call StarCraft II. Actually, I didn't call it that. Blizzard did. I'm a freak about this game, and this is going to be a long series, so strap in for it, because here uh, we're going to cover a lot of stuff. And what I mean by a freak about this game, I played it to death. I have like 3,900 games played, just shy of 4,000 games played. Maybe 12 games won. Uh, I'm really bad, but I like the game. I had to take a break, and Heart of the Swarm was coming out, and I'm like, forget it. I'm not gonna play it. I'm not interested in this game at all. I'm so burned out playing StarCraft 2 because of all the crap that goes on. But I decided I would, you know, give it a shot, and here we are. So, because I have not watched anything about StarCraft 2, I have no idea what Heart of the Swarm was, other than I knew it was a Zerg expansion, basically. That's all I know. I watched the little uh, cinematic clip that they released, you know, with BlizzCon last year or something. And that's it. That's all I know about it. I don't know, have clue one what the new units are. I don't know anything about the game other than it's basically Zerg, Zerg's expansion. I'm guessing the next one's going to be Protoss's expansion. Okay, so a little bit of background about me. Let's go ahead and have a look at my ranking or whatever. I did start it up uh, this morning and played two of the versus AI games just to see if I could see anything new. Other than that, this is going to be a brand new start for me, meaning that I'm going to start off on the ladder. I don't know where I'm going to end up. I got on silver last season. That's the best season I ever had. I'm saying last season. Last season I played, which was like October last year. <laughs> okay. So it's been a while and I haven't played uh, at all the Heart of the Swarm. So this is going to be a video series. We're going to cover everything from scratch for Heart of the Swarm. And you can learn along with me and you can follow me up the ladder. We'll see how I do. And uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun. So here we go. Let's get into the actual meat of what this episode is about. We're going to cover the new units and see what I think about them and all that. Okay, so if you're not familiar with StarCraft 2 at all, you might have to watch some other videos about that. We're just going to basically go from that you already understand some of the basics and we're going to see what's new with Heart of the Swarm, not what's new with the entire game. Help me! Help will always uh, show you basic the basic stuff, how to play, the controls and game mechanics. That's for you to watch or you to learn, okay? I'm not going to cover that stuff because that's really, really basic. and. There's a guy out there called Day9, if you're not familiar with him. Amazing StarCraft II player and commentator. A lot of fun to watch. Uh, so check out Day9. He teaches you from scratch how to play StarCraft, and that's where you want to go. Okay, so Protoss units. Protoss is my favorite race. I love Protoss. Uh, I will probably not play them right off the bat. I actually want to play Zerg at first, so we'll cover that in a second. Uh, so the probe's the same. Zealot looks the same. Sentry's the same. Stalker's the same, Dark Templar's the same, my favorite unit. I love Dark Templars, they're just such a pain in the ass. Uh, High Templars, Archons are the same, Warp Prism's the same, Observer's the same, Immortal's the same, Colossus, Phoenix, Void Ray, also one of my favorite units, and yes, I understand you're probably saying I'm a cheeser, whatever, I still love the Void Ray. Uh, here's a new unit, the Oracle. Okay, so it's a flying caster, can use Revelation, Envision, and Pulsar Beam. What is that, you say? Well, let's find out down here. Revelation, it causes enemy units and structures within the target area to grant vision for 60 seconds. Does not affect cloak or burrowed units. Envision allows the Oracle to detect cloaked, burrowed, and hallucination units, hallucinated units for 60 seconds. And then activated pulsar beam, charges the Oracle's pulsar beam, pulsar beam and allows it to attack enemy ground units. So it's an air versus ground unit. All right, so basically it looks like it's some sort of uh, it can see uh, hallucinated and also uh, invisible units, so maybe it's like a step up from the sentry or the observer. I mean, I don't know. We'll check it out. We're, like I said, I'm. This is literally the first time I've looked at this stuff. Okay, so I'm learning it with you. So we'll actually get out on the on the ladder and we'll play and we'll see what happens when we come up against these units. All right, the tempest. Tempest is obvious. It's a ground unit. Siege artillery can attack ground and air units. Ooh, that's nice. That's very nice. Um, okay, so it looks like it uses the same thing as the Void Ray, as far as like the armor. It uses the same, uh, okay, good. And it's good against uh, other ground units, Siege Tank, Colossus, but it's weak against Viking. So, it oh, it flies! So it flies and shoots down to the ground. Oh, neat. Okay, so it's like a Void Ray in a way. It's weak against Vikings and Void Rays and Corruptors. 
All right, so it's an air unit. Very neat. All right, the carrier. It's all the same. This looks exactly the same. Okay, the interceptor does come out of the carrier. The mothership core. Ooh, what's this? So this is the this comes up before the mo motherships are very expensive. I love motherships, but mothership core looks like this comes up first. Mobile flying caster can use the photon overcharge, mass recall, and time warp abilities, and can be upgraded to a mothership. Ooh. Okay, so it can be upgraded to a mothership. Great. Got the photon overcharge, mass recall, which I love. Love that. It's an awesome ability. And then time warp. Warp space time when target area for 30 seconds. Enemy units enter the field and movement speed reduced 50 years. Oh, okay, so it reduces movement speed, but it doesn't suck them into the vortex, which is my favorite Protoss. Oh, did they not have the movement speed reduced by 50%? They lost the vortex. Oh, my toilet bowl of terror. Oh my god, it's gone. That's that's very sad. Very, very sad. All right, uh, and then the photon cannon, which we all know and love. It's the number one cheese thing to drop photon cannons in people's bases. Okay, very nice. All right, so um, let's move on to Terran. Okay, Sissy V, Mule, Marine, Marauder, Reaper, Ghost, Hellion, ooh, Hellbat. So Hellion converts into Hellbat. It's like a Transformer, isn't that cute? Uh, but it's not like the Hell... Hellbat before used to be like a fire guy in StarCraft 2. Now he's turned into like a tank, a uh, transformer. All right, so it's strong against zergling and zealots. Wait, okay, so it's ground unit must walk. Transformation, sir. Okay, so basically it's it's the upgrade for the hellion. Ooh, a widow mine. They brought them back. See, those were available in the campaign, but you couldn't play with them out on the thing. So hellions dropped these. Sentinel missiles. Attacks by launching missiles at the enemy ground and air units that get too close. Missiles deal 125 damage to the primary targets and 40 splash. Ooh! Lovely! Drilling. Okay, so yeah, the Widow Mine can actually just walk around, I guess, and then it also can burrow, because that's what it's supposed to do. It used to. You, basically, your Hellion could drop Widow Mines in the. Uh, so ba it's like a. It's like. It's like Banelings for. For mar Marines. Or for. Uh, Terran. Alright, Siege Tank, obviously the same, Thor is the same, Viking, Medivac, Raven, Banshee. Battlecruiser is the same, Planetary Fortress, Bunker, same, Missile Turret is the same, Defense Drone is the same, and Auto Turret. Ah, Terran got ripped off here, man, there really doesn't appear to be anything major other than the Hellbat and the Widow Mine. I don't see anything else that's really big. Alright, let's move on to Zergi. Larva. Love the larva. Drones. Zerglings. Banelings. Banelings. Roach. Hydralisk. What's this? A viper? Ooh, neat. Okay. What does it do? It's an air unit. Um, consume. Targets player owned structure and consumes 200 life. Oh, it's for taking out buildings. Converting the damage dealt into 50 energy. Ooh, it builds up its own energy by eating a building. Holds the target unit to the location of the Viper. Whoa! You can pick up units and pull them to you? <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Okay, a blinding cloud. Creates a cloud for 14 seconds that reduces the attack range. That's pretty cool. I guess it's a nice ability. Uh, so it's strong against tanks and cloud. Anything on the ground is really strong against. Really weak against. Like, must be a secondary. It's an air unit. So... All right, Mildulisk are the same, Corruptor is the same, Swarm Host. Ooh, what's this? Okay, it's a ground unit. Uh, spawn Locust, must be Burrow. It spawns two Locusts. Locust at 15 second timed life. Burrow, upgrade, evolve it during Locust. Increase the lifetime of Locust by 10 seconds. Oh, so these, these must be like some kind of ground, crazy ground unit of some kind. Really good against Marines, Stalkers. They burrow and they spawn more. So maybe they just like, they have maybe they make like ten of them and they spawn. How many do they spawn? Two more, so you'd have thirty or uh, twenty. I'm sorry, really bad with math. Um, twenty more, so thirty total. Yeah, and then they last for fifteen seconds. That's pretty neat. I have to figure out how to play that. That's kind of interesting. Locust. Okay, that's the timed creature that comes out of the uh, swarm host. Okay. Uh, Infestor, 
Oh, same same stuff for the infester. What a pain in the ass unit these things are. Okay, you, yeah, those of you who've played know this, this is a pain in the neck. Ultra looks the same. Broodlord looks the same. Broodlings they come out of the Broodlord and Overlords the same. Overseer Queen, Changeling, Infested Terran. Those are the same. Those come out of the uh, Infested Terrans come out of the Infestor. Uh, Spine Collar looks the same. Spore Collar looks the same. And Nidus Worm, which is a pain in the ass. Okay. The tech Trees. This looks to be the same. Cybernetics, Rotator, okay. Twilight Council, Fleet Beacon, Robotics, Beta. So, first tier, second tier, yeah, first tier, second tier, third tier, fourth tier, fifth tier. Okay. Terran. Let's see, where do they put... Okay, the Hellback comes under the factory, of course. Starport makes all the air units fine. Zerg. Larva can do all of this fine. Um, unlocks Overseer, Roach, Baneling, Swarm Host. Okay, so you need an Infestation Pit, which unlocks the Infester and the Swarm Host. Hydralisk, Mutalisk, Corruptor, Nidus. Okay, the Hive does the Viper. Really? Where does the Viper come from? No, the Viper comes from Hive. Neat, so you don't even need to go into air with the Spire? Unlocks Moonless and Crap. So the, the, the Viper comes from the Hive. I like that, because sometimes you don't have time to get into the air side. And if you, you're, everybody's gonna upgrade into a Hive, you have to. Um, at least if you're gonna be going long game. Very nice. Okay. An ultra skin the greater spire. Alright. So that looks like it's it. That's what we're gonna cover for today's episode. Uh, we're just gonna we just wanted to go over like what is new. And I am gonna throw myself out on the ladder and just see what happens. I'm gonna see am I gonna live or survive or die? I don't know. We're gonna find out because it's you're gonna be learning it with me. Learning Heart of the Swarm. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. This has been Geek Domo for M4G TV. I will be back next time with me on the ladder. We're going to play a couple of games and see what happens. All right? See ya!